decisive battle of this campaign is taking shape this evening. If the Germans are successful, it means that the end of the war in Europe will be delayed perhaps by months. It was not a battle of days, but of minutes, and each minute saw the beginning of a new decisive battle. On the 17th of December, the town of Clairvaux became the setting for the next crucial battle. The one road between Clairvaux and Bastogne is straight and swift. An easy conquest of Clairvaux could mean the swift capture of Bastogne and keep von Manteuffel's army on its timetable. The order to hold Clairvaux at all costs fell upon the 110th Regiment of the 28th Division, the Keystone Division. Well, when we got to where we could see the town, there was so much fighting that uh, it just didn't look like anything was possible to be alive there. I know whenever I got back and finally did get out, there was only 17 in my company that actually went back. And I've never seen such individual fighting. And the thing that impressed me is that the men literally held to hold it all across until they, the message would come in, we have 40 men left, we have 30 men left, we have 10 men left, and they would uh, uh, shift their forces to meet the enemy and block them because they knew it was the utmost importance to delay. The Battle of Clairvaux lasted 23 hours. 13,848 men of the 110th Regiment met the enemy on the morning of the 17th. 2,750 men lost their lives. Each precious minute cost two American lives. But those minutes gave the screaming eagles of the 101st Airborne time to get to Bastogne and make ready for the advancing German. Good evening, everybody. The Germans tell us that they took 10,000 American prisoners in the early phases of the drive, and we must expect this number to be increased. By 3.30 p.m. December 19th, the end was approaching in the northern sector. Trapped American soldiers milled about in confusion, ignorance, and terror. 8,000 men of the 106th Division, hopelessly overwhelmed, were captured that day the largest single group of American war prisoners since Bataan. An epic disaster was in the making. And in the north, a threat of another kind. Specially trained German troops, dressed in American uniforms and speaking English, infiltrated behind our lines. It took only 12 of Colonel Otto Skorzeny's American-dressed commandos to spread chaos. By evening, rumor had pumped up the capture of a handful of German soldiers wearing GI uniforms into a full division. And everywhere, American soldiers were halting and questioning other American soldiers at gunpoint. And I don't know uh, if there's anything more horrifying than being stopped by one of your own men in uh, your own army, and they give you the password, and you give a reply. And when you give the reply, instead of they're giving the countersign, you hear the safety click off the other man's rifle. And right away, you start talking about the Chicago Bears and the New York Yankees, and uh, all you know about the city of Chicago, and uh, while the fellow's standing there with his hand on the trigger. Scorzini was one problem. But at Schaaf headquarters in Versailles, an anxious commander was having another problem. General Eisenhower decided to relieve General Bradley of his full battlefront authority and divide the battle line in half. Bradley would retain command of the southern half only and someone of comparable stature for the northern half. Eisenhower's selection, Britain's Field Marshal Bernard Law Montgomery, an outspoken critic of American leadership. Many would consider this a blow to Bradley's prestige. Everything would have been fine except that uh, Montgomery seized upon this opportunity to uh, brag about the way he'd fought the battle and uh, the way he said it and what he said led one to believe that uh, 
We hadn't done much that uh, most of the credit went to the British and that uh, it's due to his efforts that they won the battle. As I expressed it once, he sort of proceeded to tweak our Yankee noses. This is James Cassidy with the American forces in Belgium. During the first few days of the drive, the enemy really had two penetrations in progress instead of one. There was a small bulge to the north around Stavelo and Malmedy, and a much bigger bulge to the south towards Bastogne. They were separate and distinct bulges, but now they have been consolidated into one big triangle of German-held territory, complete except for a single factor. That one factor is the city of Bastogne. A sizable American force is now completely surrounded in it. If the Germans smash into it hard enough, it may become a center of a siege of historic implications. in Bastogne was serious. General Eisenhower called a meeting for 11 o'clock at Verdun on the morning of the 19th. He came up from Paris with a number of high-ranking officers. General Eisenhower perhaps misread the solemnity of our faces because he opened the meeting by saying, gentlemen, the present situation is to be considered as one of great opportunity for us, not of disaster. And General Patton replied with a typical sally. Hell, he said, let's let the SOBs get all the way to Paris. Then we can really cut them off and chew them up. Well, that broke the ice and everyone got down to business. General Bradley turned to Patton and asked, how soon would you be ready to attack, George? And Patton replied, in 48 hours. The remarkable thing about it was that he did just that. In a matter of minutes, his army was swinging around from the battle in the south and moving toward the Ardennes. I'll be in Bastogne by Christmas, promised Patton. One man in particular was depending on that promise. a commander of encircled town of Bastogne. The fortune of war is changing. This time, the USA forces in and near Bastogne have been encircled by strong German armored units. There is only one possibility to save the encircled USA troops from total destruction. That is, the honorable surrender of the encircled town. If this proposal should be rejected, one German artillery corps and six heavy AA battalions are ready to destroy the USA troops in and near Bastogne. All the serious civilian losses caused by this artillery fire would not correspond with the well-known American humanity. 
Signed, the German commander. To which the American commander replied, 